Hello, and welcome to a special edition of Prophecy Watchers. I'm Gary Stearman, and joining us in just a moment will be our special guest, Jonathan Kahn. We're going to do something today that we normally wouldn't do. We're going to show you a portion of Jonathan's presentation from our recent Last Trump virtual conference. As always, Jonathan delivered a very powerful message that we think you should hear. Unfortunately, due to the time constraints of television, we won't be able to show you the message in its entirety, but we've made it available to you exclusively on our free app and on our website, prophecywatchers.tv. And so without further ado, here's Jonathan Kahn. This is Jonathan Kahn, and I want to say shalom to all of you at uh, Prophecy Watchers Conference and my friends uh, Gary and Bob, uh, who I've worked with uh, in many ways um, and o always been a great blessing. And so uh, it's a blessing to be here with you for the last Trump conference. What a name that is. Well, these are dramatic times, and I've been asked to give a prophetic message, and the prophet a prophetic message is what I have to give anyway for this hour. Um, and so in many ways, it's going to be a trumpet call f for this time, the days of trumpets. So this is from the, or this is linked to the new book, which is the, my, my newest book, which is The Harbinger 2, uh, The Return. Now, now, I can only touch on it on the things that I said, but you'll get an idea. And there's so much more to, uh, there's so many more mysteries that I can touch upon. And in each mystery, there's so much more. But what is this about? What does the, uh, what I'm calling the Harbinger 2 reveal? Is America heading for judgment? We, since uh, I was last ministering on this ministry, um, we've experienced uh, great shakings. Are those shakings that have come upon the world and particularly upon America, are they a sign of the approach of judgment? Has the ancient mystery behind the harbinger, <clears throat> has it continued to this very hour? And is that what is behind what is happening right now in America? Was there more to the mystery? Beginning with 9-11, that was not revealed, and that has to do with what's happening now. And I felt a strong sense that 2020 was going to be a year of shakings, I spoke in those terms to my congregation on the first week of the year about, because I always pray for a word for the year, and that's what I said, that this, I believe I spoke about shakings on this year and, and judgments and dark events. And so I had, had a strong sense that what was given in the harbinger was going to resume, was going to be taken up, was going to take up again, and that the shakings that began with the harbinger, we're going to be now. And it was going to be for God's purposes. And so I knew I had to write the harbinger too for this year, for, the, for the, everything that's happening and everything that was going to happen. When I first started writing, well, when I first, the, the year began, I met with the, my publishers and told them that I, I, this is what I need to do. Um, and so the harbinger, and I started writing it in January. And then all these things happened, particularly came upon America in March. The harbinger, too, is going to reveal the why. Why is all this happening? How all of it is actually the manifestation of the, the mystery that began with the harbinger. What is the harbinger? The harbinger reveals the biblical mystery of judgment. It begins with a nation that had known God has fallen from God, been warned of God, and then comes the first shaking, a strike on the land. The enemy is allowed to strike the land. An enemy attack, but it's limited, it's contained. But it's a wake-up call, shakes the nation. But then what happens after that in the mystery? The nation is given a window of time for something to happen, for repentance, to come back, to turn back to God. If it doesn't, well, if it does, if there's revival, then that, that is, a, judgment is averted. But if it doesn't, and it continues on uh, in its course away from God, then judgment kicks in. Shakings come greater than the first. And that's where we are. We're at a much more dangerous time now than when I first wrote The Harbinger. 
Now I'm going to share a little bit of some of the signs that have happened since the Harbinger came out that are in the Harbinger 2. Second chapter, I can only touch on just a few. In the last days of Israel, before judgment, signs of the gods appear in the land. Ezekiel is taken to see one of these. He says, I saw the image. I saw the image, the idol, or the image. He actually, you know, and he says, and then at that moment, God says, now comes judgment. Now judgment. The image. Now, in America, we're not going to put up gods or images of gods. We, don't, we, don't, we won't admit to that. But when you drive God out of, the, out of your culture, gods come in. You don't call, may God call them gods, but they're gods. Gods of, of money, gods of lust, gods of self, gods of success, gods of a million things. You end up serving something else. You, America has its own American idols. You end up serving something else. But how is this going to appear, this sign that in the last days of a nation that that signs of the gods appear when we don't, we don't express it that way. Well, it happened. It happened in New York City, the city of the Harbingers. Interesting. Because they, to make the image, they had to project light, a lot of light. And what was the image? It was the image of the god Kali, the god of darkness. So they're using, they're putting light for darkness. What does the Bible say? Woe to those who call evil, a nation that calls evil good and good evil and puts light for darkness. And Kali is the God of death. So you got the God of death looming over New York City. Looming God of death and destruction over New York City. Warning. Let me give you another of in this, there's so much, but this is in this section of things to of things that have happened have come since. One of the nine harbingers was a tree. If you remember, it says the bricks have fallen. It says the sycamore tree has been struck down. We will plant cedars or the eras tree in its place. Well, on 9/11, an actual sycamore tree was struck down, just like here. What do the people of New York did? They actually planted another tree in its place, just like in this scripture. They didn't just plant another tree in its place. They had a ceremony around it. And the tree was a conifer, just like the tree in the Bible. And it was an Erez tree, literally. They, so they're doing this act of judgment without realizing what they're doing. And they plant it there. And in the Bible, that's a sign of defiance that, that the nation's saying, I'm coming back stronger. This is a sign of our, of our, our coming back stronger. Well, it was, a, it was a symbol. They called it the tree of hope, a symbol of America coming back. Ultimately, that's how it is in the Bible. But what happened to it? Well, you know, there is a sign in the Bible of judgment, and that is the withering away, a nation under judgment withering away. You know what happened to that harbinger of the tree of hope? It began to wither away. Its leaves began falling off, drying up, they changed the soil. Everything around it began to wither. Symbol of America withering away. A nation withering away. Spiritually, morally. Withering away. It's still standing, but it's withering away. Dying. Then the president came to ground zero, who was, president, who was Obama, on 9-11. And he read a scripture, but he changed the scripture. It was a scripture promising national blessing. It says God will break the bow, or like the arrow, the weapon. He'll break the weapon and bring peace. But Obama changed it. I'm not saying he knew what he was doing, but it kind of happens. He said he will break the bow. Now that's different. That's the branch. The breaking of the branch in the Bible is a symbol of judgment coming on a nation. Across the street, as he, sa he said it, was this the tree. The Erez tree, the tree of hope. It was withering away, and you know what they did? They broke off its branches. And the final sign is the fall of the Erez tree. You know, you'll read in the Bible, it's the fall of the cedar. See, the reason why it's significant is that, the, you know, a sycamore is a weaker tree. A cedar or Erez tree is a strong tree. It means, in Hebrew, strong. But here's the thing. If the sycamore, fall, the fall of the sycamore speaks for 9-11, what happened there? What does the fall of the, of the Erez tree speak of? That's a much bigger judgment, a much bigger fall than 9-11. Whatever happened to 9-11, this is much bigger because it's a stronger tree. And you know the day that it was struck down, it was a holy day in the Bible. 
It was struck down on Passover. And you know what happened in the heavens while that happened on the earth? In the heavens, the moon turned blood red. One of the signs of judgment in the Bible. All the speaking, warning of the fall of America. Now, what about now? Is the shaking that's taking place in America now, is that part of the ancient mystery? And does the Harbinger 2 explain why? I shared at the beginning that the template is of the Harbinger is a strike, shaking, and then a window of time to repent. So that's exactly what you've had in America. The Temple of Israel is that. The, the, the signs, you know, are the, 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 they follow, that defines what America has done. It follows all those harbingers. Those harbingers weren't just harbingers. And w they were warnings of judgment and saying that the nation's going to respond in defiance is exactly what it's done. America has followed the harbingers. But you got this window. And in, in, in the chapter in the, in the harbinger called Things to Come, it speaks about the resuming of the shakings. And what does it say these shakings take the form of? This is years ago when I wrote The Harbinger. They come in the form of, of economic collapse. We've been, we've been experiencing that now. Rival the Great Depression. Disorder, like civil disorder, we're experiencing it now. Division, the dividing of the nation, we're experiencing it right now. It talks about military defeat, not yet, but, but wait. The collapse of infrastructure, we're experiencing it now. Man-made calamity, natural calamity, decline, we're experiencing it now. So all these things are, are part of the mystery. Now what I'm going to share now is heavy, if, if it wasn't heavy enough already. And first to say, you know, behind any one event, there isn't just one cause. So it's not saying that. And plus, when God, if God allows judgment on a civilization, it doesn't mean that individuals are being judged for being more or less sinful or innocent. That happens. Just like, the, you know, the judgments of Israel affected the prophets too. But could what's been, what's happening now, could it be part of a judgment? What has we've seen in this generation? This generation that's a lot, I mean, everybody who's alive right now, old and young, has killed more children than any other in the history of the world. The world, they've, the world has killed, nations have killed 1.5 billion. America's killed 60 million alone. And that is one particular sin that evokes judgment in the Bible. The prophet Jeremiah stood at the potter's gate with a, with a potter's jar in his hand and he foretold judgment. He said, judgment's going to come because of the blood of the children that you shed. They offered up their own children. Well, they've offered up thousands. We've offered up millions. Abortion. So it's going to bring judgment. It's going to be life. You took life. Life is going to be taken. And Jeremiah specifically cited pestilence and plague. The sin of abortion is the sin of the older against the younger of the generation. Well, now we have a a plague that targets the old, you know, the, the young may get sick, but it's especially, they may carry it, but the old are struck down, specifically, the older generation. We're in the generation that's just, that's coming to its end, that, that pioneered abortion in the world. They're the oldest ones. And then all of us who didn't do anything about it or witnessed it or have done it. So now, 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 what Jeremiah said is the judgment will come back to the place where the children were shed, their blood was shed. Well, what is the center? You know, America has been at the forefront of abortion, helped lead other nations to abortion, and it has killed more than most other nations and kills them later, children later, at later stages than, than nations of the world. But where in America has more blood been shed of children than any other? New York State. So where did this come to? What place in New York? New York City. New York City is the capital of abortion in America. And so it became the capital of the plague. So this thing came. As you have taken life, life will be taken. And so 
the capital city of abortion became the plague, the capital of the plague. New York. Do you know that, that, that the majority of cases of this plague that came upon the, America came through New York? And do you know where abortion came from? Abortion was legalized in New York three years before the country. It helped lead the country to abortion. It became the capital back then. And, and people came to New York and it, as the capital. It spread abortion. Now it spreads the plague. And what happened? Well, here's something else. What happened just before all this happened? New York did something. They crossed a line. If you remember, they voted to approve a law that would kill children up to the time of their birth. They denied it, but that's what they did. And they celebrated celebration. They lit up the harbinger. They lit up the tower, the harbinger at ground zero to celebrate. You don't do that. And before that year was over, the plague began. And would come, especially New York, the death toll, even to this day, was, was highest of any place. More, more it has been, at this moment, you know, things may change, but at this moment, it's double the, 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 next, the next thing coming. And New York City, much in that. And it came to the city where you had the god of, the, of death and destruction, remember? And now they relit the, the Empire State Building during the plague, and they, they, it was now lit blood red. And the first news that the plague had come to America was in uh, Seattle, patient zero. They found out the next day, made headlines all across America, and then the headlines had a date next to the headline. You know what the date was? January 22nd. You know what that is? January 22nd is the day that America legalized abortion. And it was one year exactly to the day that New York lit up that tower and celebrated and passed that law celebrating the death of children up to the time of their birth. Now, here it's going to get even more uh, eerie or amazing. Jeremiah gave that prophecy about what was going to happen because of the children, where it's going to happen, the, by the potter's field, Hinnom Valley. And he's standing at the potter's gate, it says. He's holding in his hand the potter's jar. He's going to smash it. It's linked to that, that prophecy is linked to the potter's field. And he says in that prophecy, he says there's going to be so many dead people, they won't be able to handle it. They won't be able to bury it. You know what happened in New York? There were so many people dying that they couldn't handle it. They shipped off the unclaimed bodies to an island. The island, they buried them there. You know where they buried them? In the place they call Potter's Field, the very place that was named after the place that Jeremiah is standing, standing on as he gives this very prophecy. When Jeremiah spoke about this prophecy, same thing, the killing of children and the, the judgment that came. He cries out. And so that's when he cries out. He says, is there, is there no bomb in Gilead? Bomb, a cure, a medicine, uh, and in Gilead, a place where medicine came from. Is there any hope for this judgment, any cure for it? Well, well America was seeking a cure from, for its, its plague. And one company came up with it in the spring, came up with a cure. It was a minor, you know, a little cure, it seems. And, but the stock market went up 500 points. That's how big this news was. And so it was a bomb of Gilead. You know, America was seeking for a bomb, B-A-L-M, a bomb of Gilead. You know what the name of the company was that produced that bomb? The company's name was Gilead. Gilead. The last thing I'll share about this, and in the, in the book, there's like 30 pages, there's so much. Jubilee, the Jubilee is a blessing, but it can also be a judgment. You know, for the, if you took somebody's land, it's taken away from you on the Jubilee. It's a time of restitution. Whatever you took is taken back. Well, America took the life of children, took life. When did it begin in America? 1970, abortion on demand begins in America. What is the Jubilee in year? 2020, life is taken back. You know, when exactly did New York pass abortion on demand? In 1970, two dates. Two votes, April 9th and April 10th of 1970. You, the New York Times did a study of the plague that struck New York and, and to find the, or did a graph, to find the day, the peak of the, the, the fury on New York. You know, what, you know what it turned out to be? April 9th and April 10th, 50 years to the exact date. Amazing. God told Moses to tell the Israelites, go inside your home, stay inside with your family, don't go out. Stay safe because a plague is passing through the land. That was Passover. It happened 3,000 years ago. 
Never happened again. But until 2020, first time ever in 3,000 years, the people of Israel are told by their government, go inside your house, stay inside your house, stay with your family, because there's a plague passing over the land. They told them to go in at 6 o'clock, could only come out in the morning. You know when they did it? You know what day it was? Passover. So here they are celebrating Passover about staying in their home, locked in their home because of a plague, and here they are in their homes because of a plague. You know, we have a culture that has rejected this faith, turning away from it. This, this faith in Jesus is a Passover faith. He died when? On Passover. But now God brings it all back, allows it to come back. And what is the center of Passover? The lamb. What's the answer to the plague? The lamb. God is calling us back, our attention back on the lamb. And you know, the Passover in America was celebrated more in New York, New Jersey than any other place. New York, you know, you know? And I said, the, you, know, you know when the, the plague reaches peak and then, started, and then passed over? I already told you the dates, April 9th and April 10th. You know what they were? April 9th was Passover. And April 10th was Good Friday, which is another form of Passover. The, it started passing over, all about the lamb. The answer is the lamb. There's so much more, but I want to get to hope here. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their evil ways, I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. The amazing thing about that is, you know, people know that, but, but they often don't look. When you go to the verse before Isaiah, I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles 7, 4, 7, 13 is the verse before. It gives the context. The context is, if a plague comes on the land, well, we've got the plague. It says, then if my people will come before me. It says, if I shut up the heavens, famine, drought. Well, that's happening around the world, food shortages. This year. It says, if there are locusts, a plague of locusts in the land, that's happening. 2020 is the year of the locusts. It's the greatest locust plague in generations. If there were even one of them, it, it would be enough. But we got all three. This is the time. Now, I want to bring this home. And I won't go into the detail here. It's in the Harbinger, too. I have it here, but it's, it's a lot. But, but that, that a prophetic event took place before all these things happened, before 9-11, before that God uh, did something, and I was there, I was part of it, before 9-11, where we knew what was coming, and we're praying at the Statue of Liberty. And God manifests a sign, a foreshadow of what is going to come. And actually, one of the foreshadows is in the book at the very end. But we actually see a foreshadow. But then, then we, there's another one that's not in the book because it, could all, it was filmed. I mean, amazing. But I'll just say this. We, have, we saw a foreshadow of 9-11. It was two years before it happened. If you want, you want to see it, that, that, that one image is in the book. The only time I ever put an image in a book. But it was two years before it happened. And what was the day it happened? It was 9-11. It was September 11th. We were praying because we knew a terrorist attack was coming two years before. And God manifested this at the gate of America, the image of what was going to happen. But it was also the Feast of Trumpets. And it was 9-11. 9-11 was the Feast of Trumpets. And I believe 9-11 itself was as the Feast of Trumpets. You know what the Feast of Trumpets is? It's the sounding of the shofar saying, judgment is coming. It's coming. Something greater is coming. Get ready, get right with God. And I believe 9-11 itself was only the beginning, the warning the, that something of something greater. What does it speak of? It speaks of, it's a warning. It's a foreshadow of the, the towers falling is of, the, of the, the economic power of America crumbling, the, the, the Pentagon, the, the military power crumbling, and, and much more. I can't say more with that except that, that I want to get this where we, to, to, to bring it home. But if you don't have the Harbinger 2, you need to get it. I'm not saying for that. I don't need to promote. I don't need to, I don't need. But this is something that the Lord really impressed, that this, this word has to go out now to God's people and beyond. But God's people, we have to know. We need to pray as never before. We don't, can't just hear about prophecy. We need to be about prophecy. And by the way, you can get the Harbinger 2 everywhere, anywhere, online, everywhere it's there. And give it to people, to others who don't know the Lord or others who are, need to get woken up, wake, you know, the true woke in God or get saved or, or, or know the signs of the times. We need to pray as never before. We need to be in repentance, not just, we, we can't, if we're praying for revival, we better be living in revival. And you can only live in revival if you repent. If there's anything in your life that shouldn't be there, you need to get it out. If anything that should be there that's not, you need to get it in. People see the end times as only darkness, but you know what? It's not just that. It's dark and light. As the dark gets darker, the lights have to get brighter. You have to get brighter. The graves are disappearing. 
There can be, people ask me, is there going to be calamity or revival? And I often say that, I've always said there, there can be both. You can have calamity, shaking, judgment, and revival. In fact, sometimes we only come to the Lord because of shaking. And we've reached a, a, a point in America that's grown so, so deaf into his voice that it's taking, it's going to take a shaking. But we need to be ready. We need to be shining when it comes. We need people to be looking to you. We need to be living for God as never before. This could be our greatest hour. As the disciples, the greatest hour, it was a dark time. As the prophets, it was a dark time. This could be the greatest hour for you and for the gospel. We've been praying for end time revival. We're praying for the gospel. Well, sometimes all, I, we always pray here I, I, as I speak to you in the, the Jerusalem Center. We always pray, Lord, you know, get, Lord, whatever it takes, bring revival, whatever it takes. The dark gets darker. Well, then it's time for you, the, the light of God to get brighter. So it was for the Lord. So it says the eyes of the Lord search the entire earth looking for the one whose heart is completely his. He'll, he'll show himself mighty for that one. You be that one. You be that one. Do whatever you have to do. Get rid of what you have to get rid of now. Get into your life what you have to get into your life now. It is time. It is now. The time is late. It's our time as well. It is time. As the Lord says to you, arise and shine, man of God. Arise and shine, woman of God. For your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Darkness covers the nations. Deep darkness covers the peoples. But the Lord shall rise upon you. Amen. This is Jonathan Kahn saying, be strong, stay strong, and be strong, and shine, and rise, for your light has come. Shalom. Everyone loves a good mystery, and so many of these wonderful mysteries lie deeply embedded in the Hebrew Scriptures, just waiting to be revealed. You've heard about just a few of these mysteries today, but there are many, many more revealed in his new book, an exclusive DVD collection, only being offered through a few select ministries. We'd love to send you Jonathan's new book, Harbinger 2, The Return, for your gift of $30 to the ministry, which includes shipping and handling anywhere in the U.S. In addition to the new book, Jonathan has produced a wonderful DVD set for our ministry, eight DVDs in all, which covers far more ground than he's able to include in the book. Yes, even more mysteries, 63 chapters to be exact. This uncensored DVD collection allows Jonathan's passion and concern for America's future to shine through. We'd love to send you this valuable resource for your gift of $60 to the ministry. Once again, that includes shipping and handling in the U.S. And as we always do, we've created a special discounted package for you. The book and exclusive DVD set come with several special bonuses, a copy of The Paradigm, along with a companion audio CD and a live conference presentation that had people standing on their feet, anxious for the return of the king. You won't want to miss his words of wisdom and insights into the last days. You can receive this exclusive offer with these three special bonuses for your gift of $100, shipping included in the U.S. When you give to Prophecy Watchers, you not only receive these valuable resources, you're helping support and further our mission and purpose. We want to continue to spread the good news and the exciting things God has in store for our future. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Call us at the number on your screen or go online to prophecywatchers.tv to support this relevant and vital work. Remember, everything that we are doing at Prophecy Watchers is made possible with your support. So stand with us today.